All right, guys, next up what we're going to do here is I went ahead, and if you can see down here, I removed all the uh, head stud bolts, so those are all out now. Uh, what I need to do next is I need to remove all the valves. Now, what I need to do to do that is I'm going to use this little tool right here. It's called the Valve Master Toyo tool. If you've worked on a Super or most Toyotas, you've probably heard of this little tool. It's pretty freaking nifty. It flips over, so this side is designed with a little magnet in it uh, to press down on the valve itself, and then there's a magnet in it to catch all the keepers and all that stuff so it doesn't go flying. And then you pull it apart, and there's actually a little ball detent on the other side. This allows you to put the keepers on this, wraps around it, and then we press it on, the ball detent goes in, clips onto where it needs to be, and uh, it's done. It's a pretty neat little trick little piece. Uh, I've used it twice now, and it's always worked really well for me, so I'm kind of excited to try and use it here again. So uh, the reason I do it off the engine stand is because you need as much leverage as possible, even with the stock valves. So stay over top of it, and that's it. Pops off. Now it's hard to see there guys, but you've got the hat there and you get the keepers inside. Now I've got my little bin over there and I'm going to organize it and then remove them each one, one by one like that and then take the spring out and just go through it. Right, guys next up what we have to do now is we have to take out the valve stem seals you want to get one of these little valve stem sealer tools you can get these at like advanced auto amazon wherever a cheapo works now one thing i'm going to advise you and you're most likely going to see this even sped up you're going to do one at a time remove the valve remove one remove the valve remove one remove the valve and here's why the reason you want to do that is we're going to be putting these valves in the exact same spot and the reason we're doing that is i'm reusing the stock valves and once the valve is seated in the head it literally mates to the head and it has a nice as a nice mating fixture. Now, will it most likely mate to the other ones fine? Most likely. But to get the best mating surface possible, you wanna make sure that valve goes back in the same pocket that it was removed from. So I'm gonna take one, uh, one of the valves out, put it over there, move the next one, put it over there, and so on and so forth. So you'll watch me move the seals and then take a valve out. It takes a little bit more time, but I think it's worth it. So you wanna grab it here, guys. You're gonna pull up. And then there's your seal. I'm hoping you guys can see this because I'm not behind the camera, but that's your little seal right there. Um, it just pops on there, just like a little rubber grommet. Now the reason you replace this is it keeps oil from getting down the head and that's when you get your car and it starts up and it smokes. These little bastards cause you the headache. Uh, I'm not getting uh, OEM ones. I'm getting ones from a company called GSC this time around, the same thing that's actually in my personal Supra. They're like 16 bucks shipped. But to get these out and do this, as you can see, is a fuck ton of work. So if you're in there, just replace them. Like, they're not worth keeping. Like, just replace them and do yourself a favor.
Sorry guys if I look like a hot mess right now, but you saw me take off that pieces of the head there, right? You got everything done and cleaned up and all that good stuff. So it's all done. We've got everything organized over here. Um, as you can see, all organized. I like keeping it like this. Now it doesn't shut, but I mean, I leave it sit out and I wish it would shut just so it doesn't move from side to side. I guess I could take the valves out and put them in their own container, but I don't. Now what I'm gonna do here is um, put the cam caps back on because I want them to clean them too. But I'm taking this over to the shop right now. Have them uh, clean up the head, Have well, Shit, I'm not sure if I should have them deck it first or should I have him weld it first. Now that puts me in a bit of a, a dilemma because I want to have this hole here welded shut. And any type of heat will distort any type of metal. And now that it's further up, I don't want to take that chance. So I might actually... I might actually call him first here and see if he can go ahead and weld that shut. Well, I've made the executive decision to wait. It kind of sucks because I could run it over and uh, get this done. But yeah, I made the executive decision to wait. Um... There is all the valve stem seals. Those just go in the trash along with, I can get in here without getting my hands nasty because I just washed them. There is all the factory studs and bolts and all that stuff. Those go in the trash. They're a one-time use, guys, so you can't reuse them to put the head back together, sadly. Uh, so you have to either buy new ones or do like I'm doing and just put ARP studs in, which you can reuse. Uh, just make your life easier. Plus, if you're doing all this work, and let's face it, no matter what, you guys are going to end up building a motor down the road. Save yourself some headache uh, and do this just once and uh, get it all done. I can't wait to see the head after it gets cleaned because look at the size of this thing. Like it is so stinking crusty. Look at it. Oh my God, it's nasty. Like the camera even makes it look cleaner. In person, it's so gross. Like and after they hot tank these things, I don't know what it does or how it cleans it, but it comes back looking fresh, fresh. Alright guys, now that I'm done with the head, the next thing I want to do is go back to the block here. I want to take off the upper oil pan. As you can see there, I have the lower oil pan off, which is nothing but 10 millimeter bolts. Now the upper oil pan, I believe, is a mixture of 12 and 14 millimeter bolts, plus you have the strainer here, uh, the oil pickup, I should say, and then you have the uh, windage tray here. Um, and then we'll take off the oil pump here. Uh, which is here on the front, which I've got new oil pump. I've got new everything, which I'll show you all those parts when they come in. Uh, I think before we do anything, first things first, we'll take off the oil level sensor. Um, that's one thing I wish I would have just blocked off on mine because I went standalone, so I didn't need it. Uh, but what I did originally have a stock ECU, so I believe you had to have that order to give me a, a check engine light. Might have put a limp mode, I don't know. Uh, but they make a block off plate now because I've heard of four stories, this little plastic piece in here breaking off, and then it shreds the pieces over time and then goes up through the strainer. Bad news bears. You don't want any of that stuff to happen. So let's go ahead and flip this over to make this easy and uh, start taking it apart. Gonna turn the motor over. Gonna turn the motor over. This always sucks. This always sucks. See how much shit comes out. And it starts to come. I'm glad I bought this tray now. I bought this little black tray for this reason right here. Because in the past, that would have went all over my floor and you would have heard Ryan bitch and complain and scream like a little girl because I hate when stuff makes a mess. But now, I got this fancy little black tray below it and I don't have that problem. All right guys, we're to the last part here and pretty much we're done after this and then it comes down to cleaning up the parts we have and then start reassembly. So what we have here next is the oil pump. It has, I believe, two 10 millimeters and the rest are 12 millimeters. Um, and then you'll pull this off. Now, one thing people don't realize is the oil pump itself is built in and it makes it part of the bot or the very top of the block here. So unfortunately, this is why you always, if you're tearing down the motor, just replace the oil pump because you've got to tear apart everything 
to get to this bad boy. Uh, you gotta take up the upper oil pan. And the only way to get to the upper oil pan in a Supra is either one, remove the motor, or number two is drop the entire subframe. Not an easy job, not worth the headache for a $160 part. Just buy a new one, save yourself some headache. So I'm gonna crank these down. Damn. Uh, I'm down. Low battery, that's why. Amazing what a good battery does. All right, guys, now, sometimes this can be a, a bit of a pita, or not bad at all. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. I appreciate all the help and everything. As you guys can see, you probably already saw all this. Uh, my channel's back up and running, which is fucking amazing. I can't believe it happened. Big shout out to Stradman, the Stradman on YouTube. You guys most likely already know he's at 2 million plus subscribers. Helped out a guy with only 40,000 subscribers. Didn't know me, doesn't know anything about me and help the random guy out. That is a good person and a good individual. You can say whatever you want about YouTubers, you can say whatever you want about certain people, you might not like that individual, it doesn't matter. He helped up a random guy he didn't have to help and did that all out of the bottom of his heart because he had no benefit from him. I had nothing to offer him, zero, nothing. And he did it and got it done. So that's pretty amazing um, that someone literally did it without, oh, I can benefit. And there's nothing he can benefit from, there's nothing. There's nothing I can give him that would help him benefit. So. If you guys could, go give him a big shout out. Say thank you to him on his channel in some way, shape, or form. Hopefully he sees it. Um, and on that note, guys, I'm out. Thank you very much. Go check out the next video. i got a ton of stuff for you because I've had all this downtime. Thank you guys very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.